I think our training was about an hour. And I was like, in just an hour, I would learn everything I need to, to, to start a podcast. And she said, yes, and you can start a podcast in a day. What if writing a book is not just a way to transform the lives of many people, but also a way to create financial freedom and leave a legacy? Wouldn't you want to find out just how to do that? Well, that's what this show is all about. Hi, I'm Henneke Wodkiss, sporter, speaker, coach, author of Podcasts Power and the host of the Entrepreneurial You podcast, inviting you to listen to the Entrepreneur Secrets podcast brought to you by C. Ruth Taylor, best selling in the author and the Caribbean's most trusted voice on entrepreneurship. Tune in for inspiration, information, and innovation to write and win with books. Get ready to dominate entrepreneurship. Greetings, entrepreneurs. Welcome to episode 52 of the Entrepreneur Secrets Podcast. I'm your host, C. Ruth Taylor, and this is a show that gives you the roadmap to take charge of your publishing and the stories and strategies to dominate entrepreneurship. I'm excited about today's episode. It is episode 52, which means we are at the one year mark. We have done 52 episodes consecutively. And just like I did with episode one, where I spoke about from book to podcast, I am going to be talking about turning your book into a podcast <laughs> and how that can be a great marketing and selling tool for you as an author. So that's what today's show is all about. As we look on this podcast journey, and I'm going to share some tips and strategies to help you to turn your book into a podcast. Before we do that, let's have a word from our sponsor, Bamboo Sparks. Your book is the perfect spark to get the fire going in your personal life, career, business, or ministry. Light that book spark today with Bamboo Sparks, a global independent publishing services and publishing education and training business for transformation. Bamboo Sparks will take you from manuscript to market faster than you thought possible and even manage the process for you. Check out their three main offerings, the self-publishing spark, the rocket writing spark, and their Bamboo Sparks done for you management deals to make your publishing easier for authors in the Caribbean and the diaspora. Discover how Bamboo Sparks can help you to publish and leverage your book to grow 90 feet tall at bamboosparks.com and that's bamboo with a U. On day two of the Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit held in January 2022, there was the launching of Bamboo Sparks. And uh, members of the Bamboo Sparks team were presented and we had a, a wonderful Q&A. And there were also some interviews that were conducted. So over the next several weeks, I'm going to be airing the different interviews. The voice you heard in that ad is our chief audiobook producer, Candice Barnes. And we did an interview with her and that's coming up next week. Followed by that, you're gonna be hearing from our chief editor, then our chief book designer. You're also gonna be hearing from some of our publishing coaches. You're gonna hear their story because some of them are authors and what are the tips and tricks that you need to pay attention to on your author journey so that you can take charge of your publishing. So it is episode 52, one year of podcasting. And I'm just going to share a little bit about the journey and uh, provide some tips to help you in case you're thinking about starting a podcast. One of the best ways to market your book, to leverage your book, to grow as an entrepreneur is to turn your book into a podcast. Now people do that in a variety of 
ways. Some persons, they do it chapter by chapter in their book. So they take the, the topics in their book and they just create a podcast just for that to market their books. Others, what they do like me is they have an entire platform that is named after their book and then the podcast become part of that and then the main message of the podcast is uh, showcased and they dive deeper into that so the book authorpreneur secrets is the book from which this podcast got its name now starting the podcast i was wondering what am I going to call the podcast? I thought about entrepreneurship ventures. And then I said, no, why don't I keep the brand the same? Because I have the Entrepreneur Secrets Academy. Again, that was an offshoot of the book Entrepreneur Secrets. And I thought, you know, podcasting is like an all-in-one platform where I could promote and market everything that I do and also establish credibility and some visibility and increase my reach. And that was part of the reasoning and the rationale for doing the podcast. And besides, you know, you don't have to show your face, although I put some of the interviews on YouTube. And before I started this official podcast. I was doing a program on Facebook that I thought was a podcast. <laughs> so I was doing these weekly episodes, 100 of them, but it turned out to be practice. And uh, I was able to have those materials and repurpose them for some of the episodes that you hear on the podcast. So that was like practice. And then a friend of mine asked me to do a one-year radio show. And so I had practice in preparing audio materials and coming on camera and things like that. And it greatly helped me. So some of the weeks when I didn't think I could podcast or felt like doing something i had material that i could draw for and i could also teach from the book so the book entrepreneur secrets the subtitle says write fast publish affordably and generate lasting income and so you will find that on this podcast i'm talking about the writing process i'm talking about how you can publish without breaking the bank and i'm also talking about how you can leverage books to generate lasting income and of course leave a legacy i had some challenge in, you know, really shaping the podcast. If you go back to listen to the earlier episodes, I am not now saying the same things that I did at the beginning of the journey. I am not doing some of the same things. Like I thought I could do book readings and people would send in their readings from their book. That didn't take off. I was doing some other things like asking questions at the end of the show and then asking persons to send in response that didn't work so well i wanted to do more of a q a thing too but i found that many questions were not coming in for me to answer it could be that because the show is young the listenership is not you know that much and so it's throughout the year i had to pivot along the journey and i found myself that I was talking a lot more about publishing. And so I had to go back and reshape and think about my purpose. What is it that I wanted to accomplish and what should I emphasize and to try to get into a rhythm. So I want to say for those of you who are thinking of podcasting, you have to really think about the long game. One of the things you can do is to create, is to record in batches or have a body of material that you have set aside. So my podcast coach, Henika Watkins Porter, you hear at the, at the beginning of each show with that intro, she told me that you, know, you, you need to have at least three episodes ready for launch. And some people say you need to have about 10 because you want to be consistent. And so for me, it's a big win that I haven't missed a week, 52 weeks, even when I went on my break in December. I had recorded enough. And what has helped me is because I have the Caribbean Entrepreneur Summit, which includes interviews. The interviews come in handy. I can repurpose them on a podcast. So 
And so you have to think about consistency. When I was thinking about starting the podcast, so I did a lot of research and it was driving me crazy. I, I just couldn't figure it out. And it seemed like it was going to be more complicated. What podcast platform to choose? What do I do? And I bought my coach's book. I decided I was going to just pay for coaching and get it done. So my coach's book, Podcast Power, the quick start guide to launching and living up your brand is really practical and it takes you through all the steps that you need to have a successful podcast. So Henika Watkins Porter is the host of the Entrepreneurial You. She interviews the who is who when you think of Seth Godin, Les Brown, Lisa Nichols, and a lot of business people from around the world. Also, John Lee Dumas, who is like the master of podcasting. He has a podcast every day and he was her coach, right? He does her podcast bumper. And uh, I said I needed help. I think her training was about an hour. And I was like, in just an hour, I would learn everything I need to, to, to start a podcast. And she said, yes, and you can start a podcast in a day. And she introduced me to Anchor, which is a free podcasting platform. Anchor was acquired by Spotify. So you can use Spotify or Anchor to start your podcast and it can be done in a day. You could use your phone. They can have your record and put it up. And I had to decide what type of podcast do I want? So that's one of the things you have to decide. What kind of podcast? Is it just a solo show? Is it a blend that you're going to have guests? So you have to decide what kind of podcast do you want? And you have to determine your purpose for the podcast and the why. So for me, it's a good marketing tool. I would encourage you to do this program with Henika, the Jamaican podcast queen, and you can go to henikawatkisporter.com and get more information. So that is how I got my start. So how do you record your podcast? In the training, I was introduced to Audacity, but I have chosen to use Zoom. Because of where my background is and everything, Zoom has some noise cancellation features. And for me, it was the easiest because Zoom can do both the video and it also, if you set it right, you know, you get the audio track. You can also set it to even split the audio. And I do my own editing. And in the early days, it was a little bit difficult. So you can hear, you know, sometimes where I cut the thing too <laughs> close or, yeah, it's a learning thing. And one of my mantras is you make imperfect progress, right? So it is progress over perfection. And that has helped me. When I told my coach that I, I was going to invite persons, no, she's like, who are you going to invite? And I had some big persons in mind that I wanted to invite, but I was afraid. And she said to me, start with one. So she said, make a list of the people that you would want to invite. Who are your top two? So I said, Joanna Penn and Dave Chesson. <laughs> So, so let me start off with Dave Chesson first, and then I'll muster up the courage to invite Joanna Penn to the podcast. And uh, I, I found a, a sample letter to pitch, and I tweaked it, sent it to her, and she edited it, and I sent it off. And within 24 hours, Dave responded with a yes. I was so elated. <laughs> I called her and I was just so excited. I think I actually cried because I couldn't believe it. And the same thing happened with Joanna Penn. And so when you're thinking of inviting these persons, start with one. And for me, it was scary because I had no audience. Dave Chesson was number three. Some of you starting the podcast, you might be saying, I don't have a name. I don't have an audience. Will these celebrities will these influencers want to come on my show and I want to encourage you just ask for me it was about exercising courage and for me asking was the big win it didn't matter what their response was just ask and so prepare your pitch and ask besides I was following these persons these are persons that I truly love I'm a I'm a big fan it's easier if you know and love this person and you show them how you're going to add value. So I knew that introducing them to my Caribbean audience would be introducing more people to, 
to their material and their resources. And so it was an opportunity for them. And also, you know, a dream come true for me. So it was a good value exchange. And uh, that was a good thing for me. And then the benefit of that, I get to promote what I'm doing. So I get to promote the academy. I get to promote my books. I get to offer my freebies. The, The podcasting platform offers so many things. It's a big win. One of the drawbacks for me in starting the podcast is that, okay, so I'm on YouTube. I don't have a huge audience. I'm on Facebook. I have over a thousand followers on LinkedIn, I have over a thousand followers. When you're starting the podcast, you're starting again at ground zero. And so I was like, oh my goodness, I have to build up a new audience. I have to start with one. And I said, this is work because not only do you have to record and edit, but you also have to promote. So if you're going to turn your book into a podcast, you have to think about all the work that is needed. And I didn't have all of the funds to outsource some of those things. So I am the one who is preparing and doing everything. And so I started sharing with my email list each week when the podcast is coming out. I also... Um, promoted it on my social media network. So I would take out a little piece of it, you know, like a coming soon. So I had to be promoting my podcast, right? And so one of the things is that it is work. (laughs) It takes work to grow it and you have to start from scratch. So right now I have listeners in 16 countries. The audience is still not as huge, but I have begun to see some of the returns. In fact, one of the things that Henika says on page 164 of her book, Podcast Power, she says, make your podcast a center and everything else, satellites that are revolving around your core. So my podcast is really the center of everything that I do. And she says, you can add value to others by teaching other people what you know, which is what I do on my podcast. So you want to make your podcast something that you are passionate about. And like I said, it's a good hub to promote your book. If you turn your book into a podcast, you always have that opportunity to do that. And a podcast gives you an opportunity to meet other influencers and it expands your brand. What I've seen as one of the benefits is that before podcasting, before doing the Entrepreneur Secret Summit, I was not seeing a lot of online book sales. In the year that I've been podcasting and we just had the second Entrepreneur Summit, I've seen an increase in my book sales and uh, it has increased more than 200% over what took place five years before. So I want to encourage you with that and say, if you're thinking of turning your book into a podcast, that that is a very good thing to do. And I tell you, get that book, Podcast Power, the quick start guide to launching and leveling up your brand. So that is it in terms of some of the tips to turn your book into a podcast. And like I said, all you need is in that book or you can go to henikawatkisporter.com. So I am both sharing a resource to win and my entrepreneurship venture with you, which is turning my book into a podcast. That's a good idea. The resource that I want to share today is a book called Podcast Power by Henika Watkins Porter, the quick start guide to launching and leveling up your brand. And I I tell you, the book is so detailed. It gives you the tools and the resources. And then she has this one hour training that, will help you to set up your podcast in a day. You don't have to have a long podcast. There's a podcast that I uh, have been following. It's about seven good minutes. So it is in seven minutes. There's a podcast that I used to listen to with the six-figure authors, the six-figure author podcast. That was 
at least an hour each time. And so the, you determine what length and the frequency. Some people podcast uh, in seasons. So they have uh, season one, they may run it for 12 or 13 episodes. They take a break and then they come back. So you can have a seasonal podcast. Mine is a weekly podcast. And very often people ask me, you know, where can I listen to the podcast? So even though it's, it's popular, there are still folks who don't understand how it is set up and how it is run. For a proper podcast, it has to go through a particular platform. That is why when I was doing the stuff on Facebook and thinking it was a podcast, it wasn't a podcast. So you, you have to run it through a platform and they have what they call like an RSS feed to get this audio to different places. So why I chose Anchor, one, it was free and the same thing on Spotify. It will now be like a hub, like an aggregate distributor that takes the podcast and send it to different platforms. I only had to do some special signing up for the Apple to get my podcast on Apple Podcasts. But you can go to your Google Play in order to listen to it. You can download podcast apps. So you have Google Podcasts. You have Apple Podcasts. You have several of them, Spotify and you can just download the app, you can subscribe. But I also found that if you just Google the name of a podcast in the Google search engine, it will pop up. And you can always go to my website, authorpreneursecrets.com. And on the podcast page, there is an archive of all the podcasts that have been aired. So you don't have to miss out. Like I said, there are some other nitty gritty to it, but that's the big picture. And uh, this book is a resource that will help you. I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes. Next week, we are going to start introducing you to the members of the Bamboo Sparks team. But as you listen to their interviews, what you will be learning are things that is going to help you to take charge of your publishing. Let me just give you the list of the guests. Let me just give you a rundown of those who will be coming. So we have Keth Joy Watson, who is the chief editor at Bamboo Sparks and one of the owners. She is going to be talking about editing. We have Candice Barnes, who is our chief audiobook producer. She is going to be talking about producing audiobooks, what you need to bear in mind. We have Colin Blake, who is going to be talking about websites for authors. We have Clavia Reed, who's going to be talking about formatting and cover designing. What are the things you need to win? And then we're going to have some publishing coaches. We're going to have Tasha Ray Nicholson sharing her story and her journey, how she started offering publishing services. And we're also going to be having Marva Smith. She's going to be talking about how authors can thrive and sharing her journey and uh, She's also a coach. So we're just going to introduce you to the Bamboo Sparks team as Bamboo Sparks is our main sponsor. All right. So let me know in the comments on YouTube or you can email me at entrepreneursecrets at gmail.com how this episode was for you. If you learned anything, are you planning to start a podcast? And you can send your congratulations. So I just want to remind you to take charge of your publishing, go pen it to win it and dominate authorpreneurship. Ta for now, until next time. I'm Tamara Francis, educator and editor. Don't forget to rate, review, subscribe and share the podcast with your network. If you'd like to increase your impact and income with books, visit authorpreneursecrets.com for more resources including the books, Pen It to Win It and Authorpreneur Secrets. Join the Authorpreneur Secrets Academy membership group for courses, coaching and community support to write, publish and win with books. Enrollment is in January and June each year. You may also sign up for one of Ruth's Publishing Made Easy courses or private coaching to write and publish your next book. Until next time, go pen it to win it.